Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a quick introduction to responsive web design. Um, I'm super excited to be here. I actually gave this presentation to Kevin in the fireworks group at Adobe a few months ago. And this is kind of a 30,000 foot view of responsive web design. So if you're kind of, if you're an expert, a lot of this might be repetitive, but I have some pretty unique examples, so I think that those will be interesting. So who am I? My name is Tara. I'm software engineer at Adobe since 2006, and I'm working in the XD group, Experience Design Group, as a senior experience developer. And what exactly is that? Well, it's a design savvy developer. So a front end engineer or a unicorn or whatever you want to call somebody, a developer who knows design, that's exactly what I am. So my focus at Adobe is actually to work with XD and the web platform group um, to prototype experiences in the browser. Um, so for those of you who are working in the web every day, if you haven't been to the uh, web platform blog at Adobe, I highly recommend you checking it out. Lots of really cool stuff about shaders and uh, blend modes and, and new like cutting edge web kit stuff that we're working on, which is definitely of interest to the design community. Okay, but enough about that. So let's talk about responsive web design, um, or RWD as it's being abbreviated everywhere all over the internet. So I like to break down new topics with the, the five W's, so the why, what, who, where, when. So we're going to cover all of those. So why responsive web design? Well, how do we create a great experience which spans across multiple devices, different screen widths, different resolutions, and so on? So up until the past, I don't know, year or two, we've had two choices. We can create a mobile site or we can create a native experience. So let's look at the mobile site version first. So let's just say I'm designing mysite.com, so my personal website. So on mobile, um, if I want to create a version there, I have to create an m.site. So I'm sure you're all familiar with an m.site. Um, maybe five years ago, I feel like my friends were really excited about it and showing me their m.sites working on phones. And it was like, OK, cool. But that's an additional CSS file. Um, you might even have to change your markup. It's, it's more work. And then the tablet came along, so the iPad came along. So then people started introducing a tablet.mysite.com. And uh, actually, NPR did this. They had four or five different versions. So they had mobile, then they had tablet, then they had tablet landscape. So this is already starting to become a little bit like unmaintainable. And then the new iPad came out. So now we have to serve up you know, retina display images to devices as well. So anyways, I'm too lazy for that. I don't know about you guys. So let's look at native. So as a designer thinking about native, there's you know, a whole bunch of questions we have to answer. All of a sudden, we're thinking about, how does this look on an iDevice? How does it look on an Android phone? And now Windows Metro is coming out, so we have to think about that. And then as a designer, am I dealing with multiple dev teams to get an experience out on, on the device? And then if I want to make a change, do I have to go to like four or five different teams to push that change along? So I came across this job listing site um, a little while ago. I'm not going to say what company it was for. But I was pretty blown away at how many different software engineers they were hiring for. Um, and this is actually only a third of the listings they had there. I just took a screenshot. But you can see they have iOS developer, iOS and Mac, web, Android, Windows. And the list just kept going on and on. It was like, I don't know. I found it really overwhelming. So what's inconsistent across these devices? Why do we need so many special, specialty positions in the engineering world? Well, the OS. We're developing for Mac, Windows, Google Chrome. And then on top of that, we have the App Store. It's different in every single place. So we have Apple's App Store, Android Marketplace, Google Chrome Store or Web Store. And now, um, thanks Windows, you're now previewing the Windows Store. So OK, let's take a step back. What's mostly consistent across all these various devices? So the web, the browser, and web standards, all of them have a browser. You can tell anybody with a mobile device to go to mysite.com and they can go look it up. They don't have to install anything, they don't have to download anything. Um, it's not available you know, on their friend's phone and not theirs. Why isn't it on mine? So I pulled this quote from Jeff Veen, who is actually, um, he works at Adobe now. He's VP of product, but he was CEO of Typekit. Um, and he says this, he says, day by day, the number of devices, platforms, and browsers that need to work with your site grows. And responsive web design represents a fundamental shift in how we'll build websites for a decade to come. 
Okay, so why responsive web design? One URL. So www.myresponsivewebsite.com. That's it. Accessible from any device with a modern web browser. So what is it? What's this magic URL? How do, we, how do we make this happen? How do we get rid of this mobile problem, this native problem? How can we deliver a solution in one place? How many of you have heard of the Boston Globe redesign? Yeah, a lot of people. Let's just take a look. So as you resize the browser, you'll notice that all the columns begin to scale proportionally. Um, when we get down to a tablet layout, the third column actually drops below the content. And then when we get to a mobile size version, you'll notice that the images are given kind of less priority. Um, the sections are collapsed into a sections button, and the search control actually drops down into one line. Um, and what they're doing here is they're thinking about the user first. So they're thinking about, what is somebody on a mobile phone, what are they going to want to see when they go to bostonglobe.com? They want to see the news. They don't want to see the, the big splash image. They don't want to see a big list of all the different, you know, sections on the bostonglobe.com. They're thinking about the content and the user first. So responsive web design is three things. It's a flexible grid system, media queries, and fluid media, images and text. So if you can leave here tonight kind of remembering these three, then I'll have done my job. So this was all coined by Ethan Marcotte um, in May of uh, 2010 in an a List Apart article called Responsive Web Design. And then a year later, he came out with a book in the A Book Apart series called Responsive Web Design. How many of you guys own this book out of curiosity? Yeah. So it's actually made its way from like my bookshelf onto my nightstand. Um, it's, it's awesome. I go back to it all the time. I flip through all the sections. And he gives way better examples and goes into way more depth than I'll go into today. So if you haven't read it, highly recommend picking it up. It's definitely a staple. So let's talk about the flexible grid system first. So, OK, we all know the traditional 960 grid, 12, 16 column layouts. But the problem is that it's 960 pixels. How does that translate to a tablet device with a 480 pixel portrait um, or 768 landscape? And uh, each column is 60 pixels wide. So it just, it just doesn't scale. So we need to move to something way more flexible and fluid than that. We need percent width columns, percent width gutters, percent width margins. And we need to drop columns in and out as space becomes available. So 16 columns doesn't really work on a tablet design or an iPhone design. Um, we probably want, you know, eight or six columns on a tablet, and then like one to three on an iPhone. So there's only one little piece of math you need to know in all of responsive web design, which is kind of awesome. Um, not awesome for like math nerds like me, but like awesome for everybody else. <laughs> and it's just this one equation. It's target width, so the desired width of something, divided by context width, so the parent width, the total width we have available, times 100 gives you the percent width. So just as a super easy example, if you want to find the percent width of a column, it's 55 pixels. So that's our desired width. You know, the parent is 848 pixels. That's our context width. And that gives us 6.48 plus like 10 numbers. And I know I kind of de-emphasize the 10 numbers part, but they're actually really important. You need all the information um, possible to get a real flexible grid working and looking correctly. So lucky for us, um, even this one piece of math is kind of taken care of in a certain regard. Um, with respect to a grid system, Twitter Bootstrap has actually released a fluid grid system, which is really awesome. And then the golden grid system is another one. It's a folding grid, so it's 18 columns with 16 used for design. The, the right and leftmost are actually used for margin and, and page spacing. Um, this one's pretty cool. It kind of just like slices in half when it gets down to each query. And then we have the skeleton grid system. So for those of you who are using WordPress, maybe, um, I know I have some coworkers who are really into the skeleton grid on WordPress sites. They say it just translates really well. Um, and this one's actually based on the 960 grid system, flexible grid system. So try them all. Find your favorite. Um, this actually came out today, so I had to change my slides. But this is called Grid Set App. It's just a little tool for designing uh, your grids in the browser. And it actually does all the, the responsive, flexible, calculations for you, which is really awesome. OK, so the second part of responsive web design is media queries. 
I find that this one's more known to people. But basically, media queries are a set of rules for how that describe how our web elements appear at certain max and min screen widths, amongst other things. But basically, in responsive web design, we use media queries to fix our design when it breaks. So when the flexible grid system kind of isn't working for us, then we use media queries. And media queries are described in CSS, and they basically look like this. This is like the general format for a media query. So it's the at media tag followed by the type of media we care about. So it could be screen, or projector, or print. Um, and then some conditional statements. So for responsive web design, we usually focus on min width, max width. You could also use resolution if that's something you care about. So basically, any CSS written in between these two curly brackets um, would apply when the screen is at least 480 pixels. So just as a super quick example, um, this is Stephen Carver's personal website, which is responsive. Um, he has this little SC logo up in the top left-hand corner on the desktop. And you'll notice that when he gets onto the tablet in the mobile version, he actually centers it. So this is something he would have done in media queries. So add media screen. Again, screen for, um, for responsive web design. Min width is 320, so on the iPhone, it would be middle aligned. And then 767, so tablet or greater, it would be left aligned. So that's how you would accomplish something like this. So the third part of responsive web design, and last, is fluid media. So this is actually one of my favorite responsive websites. Um, it's the Anderson Wise Architecture site, and they're actually based out of Texas. But they just use these really, really nice big images and um, just, a, like, just a little bit of text content. And on the tablet version, you can see that they don't lose any information in the images at all. So yeah, the Anderson Wise architecture site, they're based out of Texas. They did a really cool one with real big images. Um, and you can see that they don't lose any information in the images as they scale down. They're not clipping any images. Um, they're just taking up 100% of the width they have available to them. So I just took a quick little capture of this one. They do some cool things with layout where they start with the image on the left, content on the right. On a tablet, it's, it like shifts below and kind of changes a little bit, which is nice. But yeah, the image looks just as good, if not better, um, on a mobile or a tablet as it does on desktop, which is really cool. Um, so there's only one trick to remember for responsive images, and that's max width is 100% on the image tag. Um, so you can just add that to your CSS, and you'll get that effect where everything scales, takes up 100% of the width of its parent, and it's just it's really nice. So there's a caveat to that. I'm not being totally honest. Um, this trick is kind of wasteful. You definitely don't want to load up a retina size huge image for desktop and have that loaded to your poor friend on their edge network on Muni. Like, it's just, that's terrible. So, you know, there's a lot of ongoing debate in the responsive images area. It's happening at like the W3C level, the spec level, there's a community group, um, there's a bunch of little frameworks that do pieces of, of the heavy lifting for you, but there's no good solution. Um, so let's just talk about responsive images in another talk. I think it's an advanced topic that could be covered in like an hour. <laughs> so the second part of fluid media is fonts, so pixels versus M's. So if you absolutely need your font size to be 16 pixels everywhere, like your company's logo requires it to be a 16 pixel header, then just use pixels. This one's not as strict as some of the other ones. But otherwise, use M's. They're a scalable ratio unit, um, which are relative to the body in HTML tags. So the body tag always has a default size of 16 pixels, or 1M by default. So if you wanted your header, your H2, for example, to have a font size of 32 pixels, we use that same math equation we used before without the percent. So target or desired font size, which is 32 pixels, divided by you know the context, which is 16 pixels, and that gives us 2Ms. So it'll scale up to be twice the size of the body font size. Um, so when you zoom in and out of the browser, it's going to scale automatically or reduce automatically, proportionally. And then the other, um, the other really nice thing about that is, um, forget. Oh yeah, um, I was working on my personal blog like two weeks ago and uh, I used everything in M's and then when I went down to actually do my media queries for mobile, um, I really wanted all my font size decreased. Like they were like 32, 36. I made it like really bold and big. 
So instead of having to go through every single tag where I'd use text or specified font size um, and replace it in my media query, all I had to do was go body, font size, 14 or 12 pixels, and everything was reduced proportionally. So it like literally took me like three seconds to get all my fonts looking correctly on my mobile size media query. So just super awesome for that. Saves a ton of time. Okay, so just to, just to reiterate, the three pieces are flexible grid system, which we looked at, sets of grids, all percent-based columns, gutters, margins, scaling, um, media queries, and then fluid media. All right, so that's cool, but where is it actually being used? So personal sites, Frank Camaro, if you guys are familiar with him, he's a graphic designer. Um, this is actually his second responsive site in the past month. This one's for his new book that just came out, The Shape of Design. But, you know, this one's really, really simple, but you can see that, you know, the image of his book is scaling proportionally. If you drag and resize in the browser, you'll notice it's just, it's really nice, it's really smooth, and it looks good everywhere. And then this is actually a coworker of mine, Aaron Sheiky. This is his portfolio site, and he was one of the first people I knew personally to have a responsive website. So you'll see that, um, you know, as it goes from desktop to tablet, the text content moves underneath the image of his first portfolio project, which is really nice. And then Aaron actually does something really cool that I'm totally ripping really hard and stealing, and I encourage everyone else to do it too. But he introduces these two buttons when he gets down to a mobile size. And they just say, email me and call me. And in doing that, he's, he's thinking about the user first. So if you're going to Aaron's portfolio site on a phone, what's the first thing you're going to want to do? You're not going to want to look at his high-res images of all the projects he's worked on. You're going to want to do that on your, you know, on your laptop or your fancy like iMac monitor, like you know, turned up with the brightness cranked and just really get a feel for his work. If you're looking him up when you're on the move, you probably just want to get a hold of him. So I really like the way he did that, and I'm totally stealing it. So I just have a quick example. You can see how it res his images. You know, max with 100%, resizing really nicely, introduces those two buttons. Kind of cool. So it's not just personal sites. It's not just the graphic designer types that are getting really into this. It's also consumer sites. So Illy Isimo Coffee, and pardon me if I said that wrong, Canadian, not Italian. Um, you know, they did the same thing. And they have really big, nice images that are responsive, max with 100%, as they resize, they're scaling nice. I think they actually might be using multiple background images here as well, but I'm not positive. So they have a nice little effect as they resize. But they actually do something similar to Aaron in that when they get down to a tablet or a mobile size screen, they introduce two buttons. So again, thinking of the context of the consumer, you know, if you're looking up Iliasimo coffee and you're on a tablet or phone, you probably want to find coffee nearby or you want to buy it like right from your phone. So I think that's it's kind of a cool move. And then this one's busier um, than the other ones I've showed off. This is United Pixel Workers, which is a graphic design t-shirt shop. Um, if you haven't checked this place out, totally awesome t-shirts. And uh, they also have a great responsive website. Um, big images, big, you know, colorful background images. And as it gets down to mobile, you'll notice that they actually change their navigation on the top to be these, like, four big buttons. So again, like, thinking about what the user might want to do on a mobile phone. And then we have the content-heavy sites. So it's not just, you know, the personal sites and the consumer sites. We also have these, like, you know, how is the Boston Globe responsive? It just blows my mind every time I go there. It just When you look at the New York Times and how much content's packed in, how has the Boston Globe made it look just so easy to be simple and, uh, and just scalable? And it's so nice that I can just, on my phone, go to thebostonglobe.com and not have to load up some other app. They've just, I think they've nailed it. And then Smashing Magazine, Smashing Magazine users in here, I'm guessing, definitely. They did a really great one, and uh, I like how when you get down to a mobile size for them as well, they condense all the left-hand navigation into one like drop-down control, which on the iOS just feels really natural. So who is responsible for responsive web design? So it's both designers and developers. Um, for designers, design content first. So again, think about what's the most important content your user will want to be looking for on a mobile size screen, on a tablet size screen, and on a desktop size screen. 
and everything in between. Like that's the beauty of responsive web design. It's not just these three breakpoints. You want to make your site look good everywhere. Second it breaks, fix it. Because who knows what new tablet or new whatever, you know, Kindle size phone is going to come out. Um, and you're just going to want it to work. And then for developers, order matters. So DOM order matters. Make sure your structure is correct. Um, especially with the flexible grid system. You want things to drop down and just feel natural. And you don't want to be hacking up your CSS to, you know, change the position and um, floating objects just, just to make it look good. And then start thinking responsive. So think responsive web design at the sketching, prototyping, ideation phase. Um, they actually came out with a responsive design sketchbook recently, which I picked up for fun. But even on a napkin, I don't know, it's just been a really good exercise for me to think about it this big and then looking at each piece and just imagining how it scales. And then this is actually my most, I don't know, it's my favorite piece of feedback and maybe my most important. Just start resizing the browser. Um, I actually do it, it's like compulsive. If I've been to your website, I've totally resized it. And I've like written down notes about where it broke or where you know it worked really well or oh god that's a really cool pattern I want to use that in a responsive website somewhere, so even sites that aren't responsive just start resizing and, and understanding like well how would I want it to be responsive, how do I want to make this work, and uh, that's how I think patterns are going to evolve. And then for those of you who already have sites live today, um, are they responsive? There's a couple tools out there which actually help show you if your site's responsive or not. So responsive.is is one of them. Um, you basically go and you type in your URL. So media queries is uh, one I tried out. And then you can pick each device, each orientation, and it sort of shows you with the viewport how your site actually looks. Um, so it's just a really easy way for you to test responsive. Oh, there's audio with that too. Nice. And then responsinator.com, this is just another variation. So this one is kind of more like a Tumblr type layout. Um, so same thing, you type in, so I put in frankcamero.com, and it shows you with the Chrome around it how, how your site looks. So this is a really easy way without having to tap on each of the, the top level header items in um, responsive.is to see if your site's responsive. And then start learning the patterns. So Luke Robleski, who wrote um, Mobile First Design in the Book of Heart series, if you guys are familiar with it, um, he has a really great blog post about responsive web design patterns where he outlines about five or six of them. So I just put three here, where mostly fluid would be like my coworker, Aaron Sheikis. Um, it just kind of condenses on a flexible grid until everything just naturally drops down. Um, column drop would be like the Boston Globe website where we actually had the left, center, and right hand columns and they sort of just stack as the screen size changes. And layout shifter is just like that Anderson Wise architecture site I showed you guys. So like desktop, large image on the left, tablet, large image up top. And then get in the loop and stay in the loop. So if you haven't read the book, um, Responsive Web Design, highly recommend again picking it up. Um, reading it online, stealing it from a friend, stealing it from me, whatever. Um, and then follow at RWD on Twitter. It's actually curated by Ethan Marcotte, so it's a little bit biased. But it's like by far the best source I found. I literally check it out every single day. He just has great resources. And then check out Media Query, so mediaquery.es, um, pictured above. It's basically like a comprehensive library of sites that use media queries, but mostly sites that are responsive. And they have really great like filtering down on bottom, so you can actually filter by, by you know, responsive web design principles, so you can actually like, you know, filter by the flexible grid system or filter by responsive images, and you can kind of look, you can find exactly what you want by, by using them. And add your own site when you make it responsive. So if you make something responsive, add it to media queries. So thanks for listening. I hope that you guys have learned something and design responsibly.